the fastest way to charge your warlock stasis super ability. How's it going guys, Tavius Place here, back with another warlock build. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we're going to show for all the new lights out there and returning players the fastest way to charge the Winter's Wrath stasis super for the Shade Binder Warlock using the new exotic sidearm and an exotic chest armor piece from the Season of the Chosen. And without further delay, let's jump into the video. First, let's go over the aspects and fragments for your stasis subclass. I'm using Frost Pulse and Ice Flare Bolts. Frost Pulse generates a shockwave that freezes nearby combatants when casting your Rift, and the Ice Flare Bolts spawn Seekers that track and freeze nearby targets. For the fragments, I'm using the Whisper of Bonds. Defeating frozen targets grants you super energy. The Whisper of Fissures increases the damage and size of the burst of stasis when you destroy a stasis crystal or defeat a frozen target. The Whisper of Hedrons dramatically increases weapon stability, aim assist, mobility, resilience, and recovery after freezing a target with stasis. And the Whisper of Rending. Kinetic weapons do increase damage to stasis crystals and frozen targets. Now let's talk about our exotic sidearm, the Cryostitia 77K. This sidearm was introduced with Season 14, Season of the Splicer. For Season Pass holders, you received it at level 1, and for free players at level 35. It is the second stasis weapon we have in-game, the first being the Salvation Script Heavy Grenade Launcher. The exotic perk in this weapon is Liquid Cooling. Final blows with this weapon enable a charged shot for a short duration. Targets hit by this shot are instantly frozen at the cost of the weapon's entire magazine. This weapon has a variable trigger, press and release to fire individual shots or hold to fire a charged shot when liquid cooling is active. Now the catalyst for this weapon was also released after a short quest, and for those of you who have this weapon masterworked, congratulations, it was a grind. The catalyst does two things, refills the weapon's magazine from reserves by shattering a frozen target, and generates orbs of power by rapidly defeating targets. And this is what we need the catalyst for, orbs of power. For this build, we will not be using the charged shot because our main goal is to generate officer power and activate the exotic perk on our exotic armor piece. Which brings us to the almighty mantle of battle harmony. The exotic chest armor piece introduced in season 13, season of the chosen. This exotic chest piece is locked behind legend and master lost sectors, but once you've unlocked it, it becomes a random drop. To increase the chances of getting the drop, you have to do the Lost Sector solo, or do it with friends and get extra lucky. The exotic perk on this chest piece is Absorption Cells. Takedowns with weapons that have a damage type matching your subclass element grant you super energy. While your super energy is full, you instead gain a temporary bonus to weapon damage of the type matching your subclass element. So since the new sidearm is the only stasis weapon we have at the moment that isn't a heavy weapon, this is our only choice as of the making of this video. If I'm not mistaken, Season 15 will introduce more stasis weapons and we will have more choices for this build. Now let's talk about my stats. Initially I started testing this build with 100 intellect trying to lower my super ability cooldown as much as possible, but later I noticed that anything more than 50 or tier 5 wasn't making a difference because the mantle of battle harmony was boosting my super cooldown to 100. So don't worry about having maxed out intellect, instead place your mods on discipline since we're going to need our grenade for the next step of the build which is charged with light. Let's talk about the mods we're using. On each armor piece, I have discipline slotted for grenade, but on my helmet, we've got swift charge, which grants us charge with light by rapidly defeating enemies with sidearms. Also have ashes to assets for super energy by grenade kills and a sidearm ammo finder. On my arms, I have charged up, which grants an additional stack of charge with light and sidearm loader. Moving on to my chest piece, I have Taking Charge, which grants us Charge with Light by picking up Orbs of Power. And for the legs, I slotted another Charged Up to raise my Charge with Light stacks to 4. Those 4 stacks of Charge with Light are going to be converted to Super Energy with the Energy Converter mod on my class item. 
While charged with light, using your grenade attack grants you super energy, consuming all stacks. The more stacks you have, the more energy you gain, up to a maximum of 50% of your super energy. So by picking up orbs of power, you gain super energy and become charged with light. Then use your grenade to convert the charged with light stacks into super energy. Disclaimer. Charged with light stacks will not give you any super energy if your super is above 50% full. So the best practice is to save your stacks of charged with light and grenade for immediately after using your super. Also, the Glacial Inheritance mod will refund you super energy depending on kills, and if you consume your 4 stacks of charged with light, you will be at 50% full immediately. And one last thing for this build, and a very important one. That one mod from the Seasonal Artifact, the Glacial Inheritance. Defeating targets with your Stasis Super refunds Super Energy. This mod is really the cherry on top for this whole build. Now we don't have to start from zero after using your Super, since this mod refunds around a fifth or a fourth of your Super depending on how many kills you got with it. I've been using this build on Strikes and Gambit, also in the Seasonal Activity Override and it is very effective since Teammates create lots of also power, so even if your sidearm is in masterwork, you can still make this build work. Like I said before, in the future we will get more stasis weapons and more options for this build. But this is all I got for now, we made it to the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions or ideas on how to make this build better, let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to check some other Warlock builds, I'll have them linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for your support, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.